I also, I'm not paying 400 for Gaga. No shade. No shade. Not broken hip Gaga. That bitch might cancel. Not broken hip Gaga. Oh, please don't have this recording. <laughs> I know you. <laughs> uh, not broken hip please Gaga. Please cut this out. But well, speaking of broken hips, let's talk about anal sex. Yes. All right, Neos, it's Rafi. Greetings, Earthlings. It's Nunu Paris. And this is Wait, Wait Don't, Don't Do, Do it. it, where we tell you to Wait. Wait! Let's sit down with DC Beings and talk about anal sex. Because mm, that has a sordid and delicious history. <laughs> so today we're going to be finding out how much this top knows about anal sex. But today we're going to be talking about the top's perspective. Because in the past videos, we've been talking about the bottom or the receiver's perspective. And how sometimes you do it to please the partner in the situation. And you don't always think about yourself in the experience. Nunu, as a top, how often do you get your satisfaction in the sexual experience? Always. <laughs> and that's the benefit. Do. That's the benefit of being a top. I know that is... I, is that rooted in patriarchy? Uh, well, you first know, things first. I guess we should just like, like pretend like someone at home, the person who's watching this video, has never heard what a top is. So, Nunu, in anal sex, what is a top? Right. So, <laughs> in anal sex, a top is a person who is giving. They are pitching. Are, are they giving, though? <laughs> <laughs> They are penetrating uh, the bottom, whoever that is, and the bottom is the hole. <laughs> You're just they the voluntarily hole. describe themselves a lot as holes. Okay, I just comply. The bottom is someone who receives, who gets pleasure in their um, anus. <laughs> it's all theory to me. So you're saying that you've never actually a uh, bottom before. I've never bottomed them, nor I haven't been ever been penetrated by a person. No. And so, how how confident can you lean into being a top without actually feeling like what feels good up there? That's such a great question. Like, how do we as tops make sure our bottoms are receiving the same pleasure we are? Because it's obviously easier for most tops mm -hmm. uh, to, to to reach orgasm, to reach climax, uh, versus a bottom. So actually, Nunu, a way that the community is trying to push away from the stigma of anal sex is having a month dedicated to breaking the stigma and the misinformation around it. Is the month for anal sex, National Anal Sex Month, is it May, April, June, come on Pride, that makes more sense, or August? August is a hot month too. Ooh. I feel like the most anal sex gets done in Pride Month, so I'm going to say June. Junior. It's actually August. Okay, okay. And so that's why we're, really, we're actually talking about it today. Um, so moving along, we're going to be testing your knowledge about anal sex. First question is, you know, we're going to dive into something a little bit more fun. Can only men orgasm from anal sex? In my experience, hmm, I do think women can receive pleasure from anal sex. And just, you know, I think penetration is just fun, right? So right? you're saying that... <laughs> A woman can achieve pleasure from anal sex, or are you saying that they can orgasm from anal sex? I think if she wants to, she can orgasm. <laughs> Male G spot is, you know, in the sphincter, in the rectum, in the anus, all these synonyms. Okay. No, no, you're actually right. Men and women can achieve anal sex orgasm by receiving anal sex. Men can achieve it through the G spot, mm -hmm. and women get it from a build of pressure between the thin wall that separates the vagina and the anus. Yeah. And, it, and it vibrates into the clitoris, causing multiple orgasms. Ooh, vibrations. And it massages. <laughs> you call it my massage is my man. <laughs> 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 and we're going to find out if he's dealing with a positive top over here. So far, you're doing pretty well. I'm not going to lie to you. I oh, trust yeah. you to top me. I, I don't trust me to top you. <laughs> so that actually led to my next question, Nunu. Where right. is the male G-spot? You know, the thing is, the male G-spot is obviously in the rectum, but where it is in each is person... It, no, it's actually not in the rectum, it's in the anus. anus. The, the rectum is where the poop is, let's be clear. There's a lot of layers in there. So the G-spot is in the anus, the poop collects in the rectum, and the G-spot, while in the anus, is in a slightly different position for every bottom. And so you have to work as any person that's engaging in pleasurable activity to like find where it is and satisfy them. That way you can find their spot. And how do you suggest finding that as a top? How do you achieve that in, in your partners? I hope for the best. Now, <laughs> with a uh, more intimate or like long term or like frequent partner, rather, not you have to be like you can be a friend with benefits, you can be a frequent hookup, whatever. I just think you spend time learning what they like and like asking. It has to be like a conversation. No matter how hot or sticky it is, you can still get hot and sticky in someone's bum hole. Well, speaking of sticky, Nunu, the best lubricant for anal sex is their own cream. Silicone. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
Let's get this. All right. Lubricants. <laughs> Go ahead. Silicone is the best lubricant to use when utilizing sex toys. True or false? By the way, just to make it clear, not all sex toys are specific to anal sex. Silicone okay. is in boobs, and I think they're moving away from that. So I'm gonna say no. You're actually right, but not for the reason. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Silicone lube is is not the best for anal toys specifically because silicone and silicone actually, if most sex toys are made by silicone, so if the toy is made by silicone and you're using silicone based lube, sometimes it's absorbed through the toy. Mm. When you're using a silicone toy, you should always use a water based lube because it will not be absorbed through the toy. However, if you're having actual anal sex, it's important to use silicone based lube because the anus ultimately will absorb a lot of the water based lubricant um, in the skin to skin or condom contact. You need different loops for different um, celebrations of the anus, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> you do. The day that you finally bought them has happened. Okay. What is Drake call me? Or the weekend. You know, I'm open. Okay. Whatever you need to, Bobby. What is the best food to eat before preparing for anal sex? <laughs> Be <laughs> I don't know that. Well, well, again, that's what we're learning. We're teaching I the know. Community. You said, like, at the top, you know, you eat fruits and stuff so that it's sweet. Oh. <laughs> You're so dirty! I didn't think about y'all eating to prepare because I thought the opposite. Um, that's promoting unhealthy eating habits, so you want to make sure that we are not not okay. eating for you. So there's something okay. I can eat. Tell me. Tell me. So the best foods to eat are beans and rice, sushi and nuts, whole wheat tuna sandwiches, sweet potato fries, and grilled chicken strips. So I eat chicken tenders and fries, so I'm gonna take that one out. <laughs> <laughs> Sushi and nuts, I don't eat either, actually. So, okay, it's fishy and it's nutty. Okay, it's kinda healthy. And the other one was beans and rice, but no, it's gonna make you toot. So I'm gonna say sushi and nuts. You forgot the whole wheat tuna sandwich, sir. Oh my god, for a reason. Ew. <laughs> so you're going with sushi and nuts? I'm going with sushi and nuts. You're right! <laughs> the best foods to eat are sushi because of the white sticky rice, because it's just going to ride through your system. Oh. And nuts are also very easily digested through the stomach. So, no, no. We're talking about the pegging community today. Because for those of you at home, pegging is also a way to enjoy anal stimulation. And it's when a person with a vagina is penetrating a person through the anus with a strap-on or other pegging toys. And what we're gonna be asking Nunu is, does the person that's pegging somebody reach orgasm from pegging? I actually depend on the toy. You know, I lived with a couple who had a lot of toys and they did a lot of things. Okay. As long as it's double-sided, then I think, yeah, you could reach orgasm. But I feel like both people have to be penetrated for the people to reach orgasm. You are actually wrong from the intercourse and just like things moving around, just from natural movement, a, a person with a vagina is able to reach clitoris orgasm. A lot of people that like to peg are just now known to enjoy giving or giving mm -hmm. pleasure. And that ultimately drives them to orgasm as well, is giving someone that kind of pleasure will get someone to come as well. Good to know. What are ways that a top can prepare someone for anal sex for the first time? Prepare myself or prepare someone else? Somebody else. Okay, kind of say I stretch. You know, you, you gotta, you be cramping, you gotta just. Wait, what do you stretch? You gotta stretch things out. You know, as a top? Yeah, it's all leg work. What are you lifting? Honey. You. <laughs> are you being. It's a lot of leg work. It's Show a lot me. of leg work. <laughs> <laughs> Next video. <laughs> Subscribe to my link below. Um, <coughs> to prepare someone for anal sex, I. Wait. Like, tell them or like me do something to them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you do for them? Oh, if you're gonna prepare someone for an you have to make sure the mood is right and you make sure the body's relaxed. So you have to um, open it before you can go in. <laughs> can you define what open it means? Because that's really. You have to stimulate it, you have to play with it, whether it's with your hands, toys, your mouth, whatever it is, you have to play with it so that it becomes more relaxed and open and that as you uh, enter slowly, mm -hmm. especially if it's the first time, then it, it's easier and it eases in. That's motion. <laughs> is this what it's well, like? Yeah. Okay. Your bottom hole don't look like this after, you ain't doing it, honey. If the top don't look purple in the face, he ain't putting no work in. <laughs> Bleeding is a normal part of anal sex. Um, hmm. 
I don't. I don't want to say it's normal. Like it happens depending on the person's whole <laughs> anus. anus. The word is anus. Two minutes into the video, the word is anus. The word is anus. Okay. <laughs> so at the end of the video, two questions left, and you're still calling the anus a hole. So we gotta change the stigma here. Change the stigma. You're right. Um, is bleeding normal a part of anal sex? I think it depends on the person. The whole. <laughs> no, it depends on the person's anus, and it also depends on the uh, size of the person, of the person's member or the toy. And I think yes, in instances it can tear and prolapse, and things get. <laughs> You can't help yourself. You can't help yourself. You just can't be real. This is going on YouTube. This is like going on Pornhub. Okay, okay, okay. I don't want to call it normal. Like, yes, it's normal. It can happen. But like, if you're having anal sex frequently, then no, you shouldn't be bleeding frequently. Sometimes the anus is teared through. Um, anal sex, especially if this is your first time, or if again if the pre preparation wasn't fully realized. Um, so there has been um, just in case of blood, but there's a difference between blood and bleeding. Bleeding is not normal during anal sex, but if there's a little bit of blood here and there, it might be from the tearing, and it might be time to cool it or you take a take a breath because no. something might not be fully working itself. So nothing, nothing is gone wrong, I would say, but it's just moments to maybe re go back to the drawing board yeah. to avoid those things. Give them another uh, It's orifice. a stopping sword. Yeah. Or if it's or if it's top, that's such a thing top to say. When you're bleeding, start using that mouth. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a little top of that. <laughs> you are so disgusting. Wow. <laughs> wow. New New Paris. Yeah, that's right for you, man. Sorry. To make anal sex more pleasurable or less painful, numbing or desensitizing lubes are beneficial. Yeah, I mean, if it works for your throat, why not for your um, <laughs> anus? <laughs> so yes. No? Incorrect, Nunu. You should actually never use these sides. <laughs> Please, never do the note. <laughs> oh, never oh, put desensitizing oh, oh. nothing lube on your hole. Have you done that before? Why me? No, no, you're not supposed to uh, use desensitizing lubes for the anus because ultimately that does cause uh, like uh, the anus to completely numb and sometimes it might oh yeah because you have to use it and it might just you know ignore warning signs that might some bottles we need to have like it, are they having you know a regular move bowel movements or other things that makes sense yeah don't put numbing things um in your anus so the throat's fine though and then final question you know this is breaking into the women community okay okay me less than 40 percent of women engage in anal sex yes True. Less. Less, yes. Incorrect. A total, a study done in 2012, and it's only gone, I'm sure, up since then. Okay, girl. Let's uh, get information. 45% uh, of women have admitted to trying anal sex or doing anal sex in the past. That's pretty fierce, honestly. Good job. Do, whether they're doing it well, I hope so. But if they're not, they can go check out our video on BNS DC talking about anal sex. And our blog on Vienna Star's website there. Right. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. and so what's these gloves for, Nunu? Well, you'll find out soon. All right, let's go find out. But first of all, Nunu, are you a good top? I guess the question of the reigns, is Nunu a good top? I'm good and I'm a top. Actually, let's tell you up your questions. <laughs> you got an 80% on this, because there was 10 okay, questions B, and you got two yeah, wrong. that's what I'm looking for. I passed. You're a B top. Okay. B. Are you okay with being a B top? Absolutely. <laughs> and then you at home, what kind of top do you want you to have? Comment on the comment section below. You're great, because why y'all daddy B top? As a mediocre B top, do you have anything <laughs> else to say to B you? is not mediocre. It's, 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 it's like definitely okay. on par. It's like I'll email it's you above back. average. You're, you're, it's, a, it's, it's appropriate. You're talking to an A top right here. <laughs> <laughs> and his name is Rafi Manzor. <laughs> and I am Nunu Paris. Top extraordinaire! <laughs> I also think the best tops are people that probably also have bottom. Okay, so what, what scares you from that experience, actually? Let's dive a little deeper there. What scares me from bottoming? I don't think it's um, anything I'm scared of. I just don't think I found the right price to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to be that top at home, make sure to comment below. Follow DC Beings on YouTube. Follow Wait to Do It Podcast on Instagram, TikTok, all the works, and on YouTube as well. We're on here as well. 
And my name is Rafi Manzor. And I am Top Extraordinaire Nunu Paris. And if everyone wants to top you, where, they, where can they find you, Nunu? You can find me at Nunu Paris, y'all, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and of course, always with you. Unfortunately. I'll be the first one. All right, let's go. Bend over. <laughs> <laughs> is that what that thing looks like? <laughs>